and welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, Gungans, Droids, and of course, today, we got a special shout out to all of our Night Sisters out there because today, my friends, you saw it coming, didn't you? We have the kid reveal for the brand new Morgan Elsbeth. And here's the catch. Don't be using this with Talzin. They are trying to keep Talzin's hands off this character, just like they're trying to keep hands of all the Imperials off the the Night Trooper. Yeah, they're, you can tell they're really trying to make sure no one's getting their hands at all to do a Sokotano TV show stuff. But nonetheless, this character's gonna be important. We have a new feature Knights and Team coming, and this character's also gonna be required for the upcoming Balin Skull epic confrontation. So people, let's get on into it, and let's talk about this new character that we have here today speaking of new besides a new character the developers are finally using the new ea forums they don't have dark mode as far as i'm aware so if your eyeballs get burnt out don't blame me it's ea's fault people so morgan elsbeth i want to make sure in case you missed uh, our kyber conspiracies yesterday which how dare you i broke into the pentagon to give you key intel during kyber conspiracies i showed you guys this puzzle that was unlocked over the weekend and broken down by our puzzle masters that kind of told us that Morgan Elsbeth's kit reveal was coming today, which it has. But more importantly, this character is going to be required for the upcoming Balin Skull epic confrontation. And they also told us Grand Admiral Thrawn is going to be required for Balin Skull at Relic 7. My hunch is the Great Mothers are also going to be required down the road for Balin Skull. And I have to believe we're going to get the Shin Hati. Always mess up. It's Shin Hati, right? I always feel like I mess up her name. I have, a, I have a guesstimation we're probably going to see that as well. And as I said, when I was trying to speculate the requirements, Morgan Elsbeth, not going to be for Ahsoka Tano. You know, it's been kind of confusing who's for who, but I think it makes sense. The Peridia, Death Trooper, the Night Trooper, Captain Enoch, and Asajj are our four dark side units. We just got to basically speculate on the light side stuff. But nonetheless, let's get down to business here. So Morgan Elsbeth, dark side tank, and a Night Sister. So when, they, when, when, we, when we were hypothesizing, the feature coming to Morgan Elsbeth. I wasn't expecting a tank. I was kind of expecting more of an attacker, but this is going to be an important character for trying to bridge out a second Night Sister team. Because if you, I'm just going to scroll straight to the bottom. Just keep scrolling. Just keep scrolling. As you can see right here, they do not want Talzin playing around with this girl here. Defeated allies can't be revived. This effect persists through defeat. And what is Talzin teams all about with Mary and all that good stuff and Daka? They rely on tons of revives. Mm -mm. Not here, not here. So uh, it's probably going to take a minute for us to fully appreciate this team. As we're going to see throughout this kit, they're trying to make Acolyte and Night Sister Spirit viable in this second string team that we're having. Also, developers kind of alluded to that maybe Night Trooper could fi you know, figure its way in here. I think Night Trooper's got a much bigger purpose down the road. But as it says right here, it sets the stage for a new Night Sister squad. And in their FAQ, as they say here, why does she prevent Night Sisters from reviving? We want the, this new Night Sister squad to feel distinct from the existing one that centers around plague and revives. Additionally, this allowed us to put the power we wanted in the morgue without concern of lifting Talzin squad a little bit too high. Marquee event's gonna be later on this week, July 18th, so don't worry. We're gonna wear or fail our video game division on the money. We're gonna see what we can do with this character. In the meantime, no exclusive Datacron tied with her, but they do allude that she will have a Datacron in the upcoming set. So whenever the, the orange set, whatever it is, expires, we're going to get a new Datacron set. So there you go. And as they say, the Great Mothers are coming soon. They are going to be the leader of this new squad. So we don't quite have it. And as I said, Morgan Elswith will be required at Relic 7. Yeah, the, these epic confrontations, they're dialing up the ante. And as I said, I think I'm, I'm predicting Bo-Katan Mandalore is going to be required for the uh, Ahsoka Tano Galactic Legend. And they haven't confirmed anything about Galactic Legend Thrawn, but I feel like there's gonna be a Galactic Legend Thrawn. And I'm just making a guesstimation that Balin's gonna be required for Thrawn. Time will tell. Listen, listen. Well, we, we don't even know the Ahsoka stuff yet. So let's not get too far ahead of ourselves with the idea of Thrawn. So with all that preliminary stuff out of the way, let's get into the actual abilities. Blade of Talzin. So it's cool that we have this version. I wasn't sure if we we're gonna get the you know the one we saw from Ahsoka, or maybe the you know the best guard pike version that we saw on the Mando TV show. I think it makes more sense. If you only could have one Morgan, it'd be this one right here. Deal physical damage to target enemy, and Morgan gains defense up, protection up for one turn. And if the target enemy is inflicted with a defense down, the weakest other non, non a non-tank knights is their ally, stealths for one turn. If Morgan is taunting, inflict the target enemy with vulnerable. As we're gonna see. 
We only can see bits and pieces right now. But they're trying to leave wiggle room for these opportunities to land big hits. Offense ramping, vulnerability trying to be applied. And also relying on the stealth cheese. It may have been a minute. For those that maybe haven't played the game that long, Acolyte was always kind of this interesting thing. Getting Acolyte to just stay under stealth. I think it was one of those strategies used for the Sith raid at one point. It was kind of funny. She stays under stealth, just keep doing basics. They're trying to lean into the stealth cheese, I think, for this one. And again, we got to wait and see for the, the, the team to come to fruition. But that's kind of what I'm expecting. Then we have our special one. My loyalty. My life. Cool down a four. Got a mass buff to spell. This sub to spell all buffs and all enemies. Those are always good. You got to remember, we're trying to build a new Night Sister team, right? And we don't have a lot of great pieces. So between the Great Mothers and uh, Morgan Elsbeth, they got a lot of work ahead of themselves. So you need big things like swarm attacks, big heals, buff the spell. So we're going to see a lot of those big hitting items in this kit alone. Mass buff the spell. All Knights and Allies cover 50% off and protection. Big boost right there. Defense penetration up again. Trying to line up some big hit opportunities. At the Knights of the Spirit and Acolyte, as we're going to talk about. If Morgan is taunting, all Knights of their allies gain 20% turn meter and tenacity up for two turns. So, right here, you got yourself a buff this spell. Big health protection recovery. Ways to jack up the damage. Turn meter boost and tenacity. That is a lot jam packed into this ability right here. But, people, we aren't done yet. Let's keep moving along, my friends, because now we have Let None Pass. Four turn cooldown, and it's got an Omicron that we're going to be playing around here. I got to say, the only thing I'm a little disappointed about this character so far, I know I'm kind of jumping the gun. I, I was hoping the, the animation would be a little bit cooler. They just seem okay. They just seem okay. You know, she bows down, you know, she does a little slice slice there, and you know, then another slice. It doesn't seem as cool as some of the other stuff I was expecting. Anyways, let's read the abilities. Deal physical damage to target enemy, blind them for one turn. Armor Shred is also inflicted for the rest of the counter. And you get to call all other Knight Sister allies to assist. It feels a little reminiscent of the Armor's assist. She does Armor Shred, calls everyone to assist. Kind of something like that. If this attack defeats an enemy, blind all enemies for two turns. I gotta be, I gotta say, especially with Gungans and all the stupid Datacrons and Jar Jar Binks, blind has jumped up to one of the most annoying debuffs in the game especially when you're trying to fight the clock you know those gungans take like three four or five minutes to beat you're just smashing buttons it's like oh crap i was blind and i wasted ability blind is i think becoming my most annoying debuff in the game fear it was fear at one point then sun i think blinds up there so don't underestimate, underestimate blind it can be a little annoying but also let's throw on the omicron what do we got cooking here in grand arena <laughs> you got my attention None of this territory battles, galactic challenges, conquests, territories, Grand Arena. That is the prime home center, the heart of Galaxy of Heroes. You're going to stagger the target enemy for two turns. Expose all enemies and inflict them with buff immunity for two turns. Ooh, man. That's a lot right there. Buff immunity, I, I feel like it's... We talked about blind being super annoying. I feel like buff immunity is a little underrated. Has it made its way? You know, it, it, buff immunity, I feel like, hasn't been too important since, like, the TIE Fighter pilot days. This is going to be important, I think. Uh, getting buffity out there. Uh, if the target enemy is inflicted of defense down, Knight Sister allies deal an additional 5% damage. And the cooldown of their abilities are decreased by one. And then all Knight Sister allies gain frenzy for one turn and 50% protection up. That sounds kind of nice. It sounds kind of nice. The only downside you got to be cognizant of is the fact that this thing is tied to a special ability. That's the only downside. Generally, I prefer Omicrons on unique abilities because, you know, they kind of stick around a little bit longer. They're a bit more valuable. But otherwise, it's got a lot of nice stuff. Nice stuff. Exposed. Again, trying to get some bigger damage out there. Buff news is going to be really important for a lot of those buff-heavy teams out there. Getting the cooldown decrease, the frenzy. Big. That's a big chunk of protection up. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. And we haven't even seen the full picture on these guys yet. And then moving down, we have our unique one, Preordained Destiny. Zeta ability. At the start of the battle, all knights is gain 10% critical chance defense, max health, and a 30% tenacity boost, and a 50% max protection boost. Whew. And I only can imagine the great mothers, they're going to have a lead that enables us to get even better. Whenever another knights their ally stealths, they gain 15% critical damage for one turn. Now, we're going to do a little reminder because I know it may have been a minute since the last time we really opened up the Night Sisters kit. Uh, but they, so, yeah. So, whenever a Night Sister ally stealth, they get 15% critical damage for one turn. Morgan's going to taunt for one turn, and all Night Sister allies recover 25% health. 
health. And I think this stealth is gonna happen a lot more than you probably are anticipating. I mean, I'm kind of spoiling it. I think a nice sister acolyte's gonna help, but also keep in mind, she's got ways of uh, getting other people under stealth here, as you can see from this basic ability right here. Blade of Talzin, if the target enemy's inflicted defense down, the weakest other non-tank, Nexus ally stealth for one turn. So I think that's gonna be kind of important <laughs> just by looking at that alone. So that should happen quite often. And then whenever a Night Sister ally gains foresight, so think of Night Sister Spirit, they gain 20% offense for one turn, and all Night Sister allies recover 25% protection. You know what this reminds me of? The the first order Tide Pilot Omicron. When the Tide Pilot gets the foresight, they kind of grant a bunch of bonuses. This feels kind of like the Tide Pilot of the Night Sisters. Night Sister Spirit should get foresight quite a lot, jumping up the offense passively getting protect recovery yes yeah, so you can see why we're getting big boost and max protection it's gonna pair well with all that protect recovery that we got going on and then whatever knights is allies critical hit the enemy is inflicted with defense down for one turn which can't be resisted and again lots of opportunities to try to get critical hits out there for example as we've already seen we have ways of trying to get vulnerable on the target enemy if Morgan Elsbeth is taunting. So vulnerable allows you to try to get more critical hits. Therefore, maybe trying to get more of this stuff. Defense down, all that fun stuff. And then the first time each other Night Sister ally falls below 20% health. They gain foresight. They gain stealth. For two turns, Morgan gains 20% defense until the end of the encounter. And they and Morgan recover 30% health of protection, gain 30% turn meters. So Again, you need, you're going to need some good stuff to get this team moving along because as we're going to see, there's not a great second night as a team. So again, trying to find ways to get them more turns. They get out there and in case they're dying, they can try to make a comeback. Then whatever Morgan is defeated, inflict all enemies with health down for two turns. We haven't really seen health down be too important in this game. It can't be dispelled, evaded, or resisted. Mm, 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 mm. That's kind of a big deal. Because if, if it's going to get resisted, it doesn't mean much. But if you can guarantee to get locked in, now we're talking a whole different business. Then all Night Sister allies recover 100% health and protection, gain 5% critical avoidance and defense, plus an additional 10% critical avoidance and defense per relic amplifier on, uh, on Morgan Elsbeth until the end of the encounter. And so if you have Relic 7 because you're pushing for Balin's Skull, for example, well. You can see you're going to get 70% critical void. It's 70% defense. That's going to add up. That will add up a little bit there. Then whenever Morgan taunts, we already saw a few ways of her to get taunting. All Knights of the Islands cover 20% health and protection. Gain 15% off until she loses taunt. Then when she loses the taunt, my friends, she recovers 5% health and protection. Gains 10% turn meter. And unfortunately, they just locked this in at the very end. Like all this would have been so cool with Talzin. But then they threw this in here, where defeated allies can't be revived. So you can't use Talzin lead, you can't use Marin, you can't use Daka. They're trying to give a distinct image to the this new Night Sister team. So overall, I think it's a step in the right direction. As we're gonna see, there's not a lot that we can really do. We tried the Night Trooper with like non-Talzin stuff last time. It didn't go well, but seeing what we have here, we're in the right direction. There's a few more things I think this team's gonna need. They're gonna need a cleanser. If we're not gonna be able to bring in things like Mirren, we have buff the spells, which is good. Lots of health, protect recovery, lots of taunting, tenacity up. So there's ways of getting more offense out there too, but still, there's a couple more pieces to the puzzle that I think are missing. But again, in time, we're gonna be getting to great mothers in the upcoming weeks, and things should get a lot more interesting for this team. But as you can see where we're at right now, basically, you have your Talzin, Marin, Daka, Asajj, Zombie. These five right here, basically, that's your go-to team for the Talzin overall. Night Trooper, haven't seen too much of a positive interaction. There was a thing, but not really much of a thing. But then with the addition of Morgan Elsbeth and the Great Mothers, they're trying to bring in the Spirit, the Acolyte, maybe Night Trooper potentially, and of course, Morgan Elsbeth. But I want to propose a couple other options. Again, they said that Night Trooper might work in the Night Sister team. I think there's a bigger future ahead of them with the Night Trooper going to Imperial Remnants, but the option is there. But keep in mind, although I said Morgan Elsbeth doesn't have cleanses, remember, Talia might find her way in here. Talia's got a cleanse on her. Dispel all debuffs on Night Sister allies. Talia can do 20% of her health. Gains 50% turn meter for each active Night Sister ally. Other uh, allies cover 50% health and gain 30% turn meter. We might already have the pieces we need. We might not need the Night Trooper. 
or anything of that matter here. So keep that in mind. We have some interesting stuff that can go on there. But also a couple other things just to make kind of finish up the pieces to the puzzle we have here. Knights is their spirit. <laughs> it has the icon would show. We get lots of foresight at the end of her turn and at the start of each encounter. Nice spirit gains foresight for one turn. And as you said, that's going to help out a ton with the damage. While Knights of the Spirit has foresight, she gets 100% offense and her attacks ignore armor. Well, what do you know? When she gets foresight in this Morgan Elsbeth team, they're going to get 20% offense. So Knights of the Spirit's going to hit pretty hard. And the thing that kind of sucked when Marin came in, I mean, Knights of the Spirit wasn't a bad addition to the Knight Sisters, but you know, you only, you only have so many cooks in the kitchen that you can allow. Knights of the Spirit kind of got kicked out, but Knights of the Spirit, don't get it twisted, is still a very good character. So it's nice we're going to kind of find a more permanent home for the second Knight Sister team. And then we have the Knight Sister Acolyte here, where things get kind of interesting. We have a lot of ways to jack up the health, uh, I'm sorry, the offense on this character, where when Knight Sister Acolyte has 25% critical chance, recovers 40% health on a critical hit, which is going to happen quite a lot, I think, with Morgan Elf, with the vulnerability, all that stuff. And then while Nice Act like has stealth, she gets 50% offense. And while she's going to get even more offense and critical damage through the uh, through the Morgan Elsbeth situation. But keep in mind, basic ability right here, a 90% chance to gain stealth for two turns. And then you can deal physical damage to target enemy. If, if she was already stealth, you deal double damage. So right now, these characters are kind of bleh. But remember, the you know we when we think a character is bland, sometimes it only takes one character to make a vast, vast difference. Again, look at Captain Rex. The Phoenix were a nobody team. One little character, the key, the team was a whole different thing. So I'm seeing the picture, really curious to see what the Great Mothers are gonna have. And with the Great Mothers, Morgan Elsbeth, Spirit, Talia, Acolyte, they might be ready to rock and roll people. So stay tuned. I'm excited to get my hands on Morgan Elsbeth later on this week. You know, we might be able to do something. Maybe like a Saj lead, you know. Obviously, we're not going to do much of Taz lead. There might be something. But you know what? There is something. There's always something special going on to you guys. Because I thank you guys for coming out here. Having a good time with me. Looking forward to the fun week ahead of us. 3v3 Grand Arena sign-up has just started today. So get ready for that. And our testing later on this week. But until we meet again, always remember, my friends. Oh, oh, oh baby. Gary, what do we like to say? Gary. How many times? Okay, all right. Okay, Gary's being a little shy. I don't know why the guy's shy, but I'll tell you guys because I'm not shy to say it. It's great to be in the Empire today.